So in this video, I want to talk about Cautious Hero, an anime that came out back in September of 2019. And honestly, I think a lot of us really loved what the series tried to do, this kind of whole comedy aspect of an isekai, because isekais, there are a lot of them. And yes, I've debated this whole issue of there isn't as much isekais as people claim. Like, there's a lot of over-exaggeration when people look at isekais and go, oh, we take up the vast majority of all the animes out there. There are a lot of other animes out there. It's just a lot of people talk a lot about isekais, so they get a lot of attention, so it feels like there's a lot of them. But even with that, there's so many animes coming out every season, and yeah, there have been a fair few isekais out there it can be feel it can feel a little bit repetitive and i feel like o cautious hero was one of those isekais that tried to look at the more comedy aspect of it tried to do things in a more interesting light and had a lot more fun in just being outlandish overall with the very concept of what it is the idea of a goddess that can summon a hero to then save another world and it's like kind of like a business kind of thing though they do have a tendency to kind of like break all the rules that they put out in place and then kind of apply the rules. The rules seem to be very loose in what they do apply and don't apply. Or maybe it's just the individual certain goddess doesn't know all the rules quite that well. And maybe there are just some rules that you can break that weren't really there and vice versa. But the whole comedy aspect of it is that the hero is super cautious and that there's this interesting backstory as well that links the goddess and the hero with other people as well from past life that they did live and so I really liked how it first started off with a simple base story had a lot of fun comedy aspects the dub also is actually pretty decent as well though the sub is just phenomenal when you really listen to the vocals and how it really stretches them so well as like I said as much as the dub has its good parts the sub just takes it even another whole step further and it's just so much fun, but as I mentioned, it starts off with a very simple story, having fun with it, and then there's a much more deeper underlining thing going on, and the ending definitely has a bit of a tragic end, but also a sweet end at the end, which leads into the the idea that there is more story going on. And of course, I did look into the source material and all that, and yes, there is enough material for a second season, and about that, that's it. So clearly, there is an, another conclusion to the story, but I don't ever see it get in another season. Season two is pretty much just out of the, out of the question, just purely because I see it as a source material seller. But I do think they did a great job at kind of selling it and this kind of idea of oh, you can find out what happens after the anime, and it does a really good job of that. I know some people would argue, oh, well, it doesn't really need a season two because it concluded the story. But it's like yeah, but you got to go over her punishment. And the fact that she's got to re-summon that same hero and now he's like even probably worse than before. It's a fun story, it has a fun conclusion, and it has that fun, interesting idea of where the story can go. It's just, because isekais are so common, it gets a bad rap, and everyone just kind of like, or not everyone, but uh, there are loud individuals out there that kind of push this whole idea of, oh, they all feel the same, and then when you have series like this that try to do something different, they kind of just get pushed to the side and go, oh, they're just too different. It, and that's the thing. That's why I do feel like these animes do need to be shown in a more positive spotlight because they are trying to do something different. And I think it does a really good job at that. I will say, though, the harem aspect of it, because even though it's not tagged as a harem, it kind of is a harem a little bit just because of all the, the goddesses that have a thing for him and also the goddess herself. which She is a goddess, but she used to be the princess. Her feelings towards him... It kind of has a lot of comedy aspects and making fun of that as well. Though, to be honest, I just love how rude and abrupt and kind of cold and calculated he is. But at the same time, deep down inside, there was a much more kinder, gentle, sensitive person there. It's just because of that situation of that happened in the previous life, it made him extremely too cautious about protecting those around him. Though I do wonder how much of his memories he had from his past life as he was going through it, or was it just all reflexive? Because at the end, he does remember who the goddess is, but I just wonder if there was a little bit of it kind of 
like tippy toeing you like drip feeding its way through is the best way to put it so i just absolutely love this series and especially the interactions that he has with certain gods and goddesses right off the start he has this whole interaction where he just beats the living snot out of one guy to the point where they just start baking cakes because they're so scared of training anyone ever again and then they have the uh the young dragon boy who He's more than happy to train them because he actually has a leg up. And then you have the relationship between the, I call it like the assassin goddess and her falling for him and her being kind of very emo style. Though, to be honest, she is just absolutely adorable. She's probably one of my favorite goddesses, even though you've got the main protagonist, like the main female goddess protagonist, even though uh, the original goddess that oversaw the B rank world. I mean, I gotta say, she definitely does have some stuff packing for her. And then you've got the Archer Goddess as well, who is just absolutely insane. And how they go about these like crazy interactions, like honestly, the comedy is really fun because of how outlandish it is. It is just so stupid how the comedy aspect goes. And I think that's another thing as well is that it's going to be hit and miss. Some people are going to love it and some people are going to absolutely hate it because comedy is subjective and some people can appreciate these kinds of silliness and all the like crude jokes and all that and some people just kind of got like a stick up their rear end where they just get upset at all little jokes that go on especially the more crude like adult jokes that do fun little jabs at like you know juggalugs and weird like I can't say these words on YouTube for obvious reasons, but you get what I mean. Like, those kinds of things will definitely off-put some people. And I think I remember when the anime first came out in 2019, there were some people that were really, like, offended that they tried to do jokes like this. But I think it's just fun. And because of how silly and how it wasn't scared to explore these kinds of things, it felt refreshing. It felt actually like something different than just a normal isekai. And that's what I enjoyed about it. I enjoy the fact that it tried to do something different and it tried to be more outlandish in the comedy aspect. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Konosuba in that sense that Konosuba does try to like really throw some like really heavy handed jokes out there that may just go over some people's heads and may just very well trigger people, which even to this day, Konosuba triggers people because of like the most simplest jokes out there, especially the one where it's the is there a pen in your pocket are you happy to see me kind of rep i'm using that as a reference to refer to the specific scene but you'll probably know what i mean where he kind of gets wrapped up by a certain demon that has both areas of expertise so there's those kind of things that very much trigger and because of what this series tries to do with like even the bow god is where it goes pretty extreme and then all the like jabs at like the goddess herself and her wanting to get it on with the main male protagonist because of his six pack and all the you know the good looks and all that kind of stuff it's it's a lot of fun and i think that's the thing that stands out to me is the comedy aspect the way it just tries to have so much fun with the story and as i mentioned yeah it's going to be hit and miss so I feel like if it's not for you and you can't handle those kinds of jokes, go, go watch something else. It's Again, not every anime is made for you. That's perfectly fine. If you can't handle those jokes from the very first episode or even first three episodes, you ain't going to like what's to come down the road because it gets pretty extreme. The overarching story is pretty simplistic. It's not like anything complicated it's very cliche and it's deliberately done like that and it makes sense and it actually works i feel like if they tried to make the story really complex and like oh well you have to go to these special areas and there's all this deep lore and blah 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 and try to really add a lot of characters and world building and stuff it would have actually hurt the story because the main world building and character building is between the main male and female protagonists and the two assist like the two kids that tag along you don't really need to add much else from the world itself other than them and their attachment to what they need to do and their duty and then their past life any more than that and it would have just made it too annoying and complicated so i feel like that balance was perfectly done and especially with the other goddesses as well so i think it's an absolute phenomenal story uh, anime story whatever you want to call it 
And as much as, yeah, I'd love a season two, it's not going to happen. It's clear as day that it was a source material seller, and that's fine. There's clearly enough material for what would be an equivalent of a second season that you can go read from the light novels and get that conclusion that you so desire. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of Cautious Hero? The hero is overpowered, but overly cautious. Any and all thoughts are definitely welcome in the comment section down below. Of course, as Edge Your Civil. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon as it gives Discord access and it will allow you to request different animes that you would like me to cover. So if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.